Hello everyone. So let's take a look at the damage caused in Ukraine's long-range strike on Crimea yesterday, which targeted a Russian S-400 SAM position. I have a few images to look at. First of all, a quick reminder of what was located here. So this image was shared by OSINT Technical on Twitter. It's from August the 28th. It shows TELs, the SAM launchers for the S-400, in revetments with four being visible. There are also two radar systems and additional containers carrying missiles. The site is surrounded by defensive urban walls too, as presumably protection from sabotage. Now, another before and after here. I'm not sure who originally uploaded this one, but the before is again from August the 28th and the after from September the 14th. So you can see clear signs of an S-400 destruction in one of the northernmost revenants, as well as burning to the south of the position. Let's zoom in a bit. So here you can see the S-400 launchers in the revenant, and now the after, all gone. One of them destroyed, the other ones moved elsewhere after the strike. You can also see next to the destroyed S-400, another vehicle which was destroyed. This could be a missile container or a utility vehicle or some other sort of support vehicle. It's hard to tell, but we know one S-400 was destroyed. Also, it's important to note that the Earth and Revenants did their job, protecting the other nearby equipment and launchers from being hit in this missile strike. It is possible the other equipment here and the nearby launchers did sustain non-critical shrapnel damage, which wasn't enough to turn them into a black smudge on the ground, but still gave them a bit of a battering. But we can't say for sure. But from the satellite images, it does look like the defensive Revenants did do the job in protecting the other equipment. And I'm as shocked as you are to see something built by Russia that actually did its job. Highlighted here, two craters. I don't think these are missile impacts. These could be where drones are hit or even shrapnel damage from the S-400 when it exploded. Now for burning to the south of the position, I can't see any signs of any um, S-400 launchers or that sort of thing being here. I think this burning is entirely caused by the secondary explosion starting fires here. Here's the area hit on Google Maps. So this was a fairly new SAM site, although, and apologies here in advance for subjecting you all to the site of an overweight old man in his banana hammock. We did see photos of this site last year after Bobby Nutt visited the site and gave it his location, shown on screen now. Now let's move on from my new screensaver and check the next part of the video, the distance. So, it was over 200 kilometers from Odessa, the likely launch point for this attack. As for the attack itself, Ukraine said it was carried out by Neptune missiles working with drones. The drones hitting radar equipment, the missiles hitting the S-400. I don't think the radars would be positioned here, as I can't see any signs of any being hit here. I think most likely elsewhere along the coast, maybe up towards um, Olenivka. So the radars were blinded by drones, and then Ukraine fired a Neptune through the blind spot to hit this S-400. The S-400 is this, basically an upgraded S-300 SAM system. They entered combat-ready status in 2007. A battery of S-400s costs 200 million. Now that is at the cost of an individual launcher, as was hit here. A battery features between three to four launchers, as well as a command post a target acquisition radar, and an engagement radar. So that whole lot, all those vehicles, would cost 200 million. The range of the S-400 is up to 380 kilometers, depending on which missile it's been equipped with. The S-400 is often integrated with Panzer to form a two-layer defensive network. The S-400 targeting long-range threats. The Panzer targeting anything that gets past the S-400, which honestly, seems to be everything. The Panzer II resembles the S-400 in the fact that most of the time it too fails at its job. Oryx lists four S-400 launchers as destroyed so far, this one not being added yet. Now defending Crimea, Russia has five S-400 batteries according to Forbes. So with each battery having at least three launchers, that makes at least 15 launchers present on Crimea and possibly as many as 20. Now. I can find mention that two batteries of the 18th Anti-Aircraft Rocket Regiment are based in Theodosia. 
and two batteries of the 12th Anti-Aircraft Rocket Regiment based in Sevastopol. I can't find what the 5th battery of the S-400 is. If Forbes is correct, then I'd guess it would be one deployed elsewhere from Russia to Crimea as extra protection. The S-400 here, given its proximity to Sevastopol, will be one of the batteries belonging to the 12th Anti-Aircraft Rocket Regiment. Two launchers in Crimea are now confirmed as destroyed. Now Russia has 57 battalions of the S-400, with a total number of launchers of 456. So they do have a lot of these. Some systems are something Russia is not going to run out of anytime soon. Now as I mentioned, the longest range missile with the S-400 is 380 kilometers. But I don't know which missile these Crimean launchers are equipped with. The most common in service is the 48N6 variant, which has a range of around 240 kilometers. For this map, I've used the 380 kilometer one as a rough estimate of the coverage, the maximum coverage, of the S-400 near the Black Sea. So feasibly, an S-400 battery here can cover the entirety of the Black Sea between occupied Crimea and Odessa. So taking these out is pretty important for Ukraine strikes hitting targets in Crimea. This launcher here, basically covering potential attack routes to key targets such as Saki and Simferopol air bases, as well as Sevastopol Harbour. Highlighted here are the known locations of S-400 and S-300 batteries. The one to the north is which Ukraine targeted before. It's unknown if that entire battery has now been relocated or not. The one in the centre we've covered today. Finally, there's an S-300 or S-400 site identified via satellite imagery last year as being on the south coast. So the S-300, it's unknown how many batteries Russia has in Crimea, but S-300 are present here. One battery was shipped from Syria to Crimea as extra protection to supplement the batteries already there. So on paper at least, Crimea is well protected with a layer of S-400 and S-300 SAM systems, as well as shorter range systems such as the Panzer supplementing them. Given the recent strikes we've seen on Crimea though, it's open season on military targets there, and we're going to have to wait for the sequel and see what Ukraine hits next. And I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Sevastopol Harbour hit again. There are likely others based close to the Crimean Bridge to try and protect that. So that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. Now, before we finish, I'm going to play a message from Sanaf about an upcoming fundraiser, which I hope you enjoy too. Thanks very much, and take care everybody. Dear friends, my name is Sanaf, and I've been living in Ukraine for the past 10 years. During this time I've made many good friends, um, one of which is my gym instructor, a gentleman called Yuri. At the start of the conflict, Yuri went to join the military and I decided to stay on and work as a volunteer, providing essential equipment to the front lines, to the battalion, to make sure they're fully supplied as best as I could. That meant lots of fundraising, support from different communities, etc. But we've been tremendously successful and made a huge impact for the guys at the front. Uh, we've recently finished a fundraiser with Sukhumimus and uh, a couple of days ago Sukhumimus very kindly broadcast our thank you message from the battalion. So hopefully you caught that. I'm here to ask for support for what is essentially a bit of a boring topic. The utility vehicles inside the battalion have taken damages, they need repairs, maintenance, broken engines, broken gearboxes, nothing colourful or fancy, um, but there is a massive shortage of this stuff in Ukraine and an abundance of it in UK. So uh, with your support, I'm planning to purchase some uh, purchase hardware and load it up into a Pajero around about mid-October and transport it uh, over to Ukraine to keep these guys on the move. These utility vehicles are essential they, for medical supplies, getting to the civilians, for providing food to battalions. They load them up with shells, so howitzers. Sometimes they get to the front and they're in a danger spot that they don't realise and they need to get out real fast and they load 10 people onto the trucks and just make a run for it. So you understand the vehicles <laughs> are critical but they also wear out quite quickly. Uh, below is a link to my uh, to a crowdfunding site, a third party uh, crowdfunding site, and also I think we're going to include PayPal in this. 
So with your continued support, um, let's try and get this over the line and help those boys out. Um, they are making the ultimate sacrifice in large numbers and this is not just a local problem out in East Europe. This is a problem that affects us all everywhere. Um, so with your very kind support, we can continue this fight and bring this conclusion, bring this conflict to a successful conclusion. Thank you.